hello, good looking, and welcome back to my channel. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kendra Morgan, and I put out content weekly about makeup brushes that are Morphe, sunscreen, make, just makeup brushes, okay, makeup brushes. It's 2022, we all know I don't do Morphe. Makeup brushes, sunscreen, single eyeshadows. You like it, then subscribe. Let's get into this. I want to feature a video today where I talk about kind of like my wish list of if I could purchase whatever, if I had all the money in the world, or simply what I would have purchased before I went on my no buy. So before we get started, if you haven't already and you don't know, this is an, another episode in my series of Nothing New 22. So we're gonna we're gonna do this. We're really gonna do this. This is gonna be my wish list, like all the stuff I wish I would have bought. And kind of a spoiler alert, it is a couple of things that were promised to be launched, but then they were put off, so they did launch earlier in 2022. I was wanting to buy them anyways. Okay. I was wanting to buy them anyways. So without any further ado, let's get started. First thing, and this is in no particular order. Let me let me scoot over just a little bit. Does that give me enough room? Am I still the main event? Uh, yeah, I am. Good, okay. The first thing that I wanted to purchase before I went on my no buy, and I wish I would have, is the Bobbi Brown Lux eyeshadows. Um, I did not realize they had this really glittery, foiled, like metallic singles that they put out. I didn't realize that. And they're kind of almost duochrome-y. So there's um, Moonstone, Melting Pot, and Heat Ray. I think for me, Moonstone and Melting Pot would have been like my cup of tea. I'm not sure I would have went with Heat Ray. Um, the, hopefully you can see the credit. Yeah, I keep on, yeah, yeah, there it is. There's the name. I keep on there, try to give credit where credit is due because a lot of this I see on Instagram so hopefully you guys if you guys want to check out any of their pictures or their Instagrams their their names will be up there I don't know if you can link Instagram accounts on your description bar but if you can I will try and do that for you but if not just go and type in their names in Instagram that is something I wish I would have purchased just to give me a little bit more insight into the Bobbi Brown formula kind of get me into their singles to see if I liked anything. Um, my understanding is that Bobbi Brown is kind of one of the more, like you're paying a lot more for the brand name, not really necessarily getting all that much product. That is something that I wish I would have purchased. I still have this on my wish list. I saw them go on sale for like 30 or 40% off and I still want it and that is the ColourPop It's a Mood palette. The reason I didn't buy it was because it contained three pressed glitters and that's 10% of the palette right there, which isn't a lot, but it is when you're paying that much. But if you're getting a good percentage off, then I think it would be okay. However, I, I'm attracted to these colors. I don't really use these colors on a daily basis. So what I see the palette good for is singles. Um, I see it good for like filling in some of those gaps where I haven't really been able to find brands that do purple really, really well. I know I use my Makeup Geek shadows sometimes. I'm not 100% sold that they're my favorite formula for purples or matte, like the blue teals, but nonetheless, I have been using them. and I like them. I still feel like there's something out there that might be a little bit better. And ColourPop really does have pretty good quality for the price point. Now, is it excellent quality for the price point? I don't really think so, but nonetheless, this still catches my eye. And there's some different shimmery, shiny textures, and I'm kind of interested in those, so I wouldn't mind having some of those. Hang on a second. The next palette, I wish it would have been on sale and I would have bought it, is the Natasha Denona Star Palette. Rainology has 
all of the um, formulas written out for us and you can see that there's the chroma crystal toppers there's duo chromes there's creamy mattes this was what this was like her third palette that she launched wasn't it she did the 28 pans and then she did sunset and this is that right? Am I right? Let me know in the comments down below. I don't, I honestly, I don't remember. I have the Sunset Palette and I have to say the Crystal, the Chroma Crystal, the K formula ones, they were not my favorite. And I like the more like translucent base with the really glittery, shimmery, shiny topper coat shadows, like what we see in the gold. Now that I can get down with the ones in the Sunset, not so much. I'm really, I would love to see what the Star Palette could do for my eyes. Yeah, just looking at it, I really like the mattes. The thing that made me kind of hesitate before was that they're, they have that uh, quadrant. It's a nine pan portion that looks quite pink heavy. And you guys know how I feel about pink. It's gotta look, it's gotta be the right tone for me. Otherwise it looks kind of conjunctivitis-y. Those pinks might be it, I'm not sure. The other side, however, looks like another rendition of gold which I'm extremely drawn to if you haven't already guessed. Um, I purchased the star palette or the gold palette, but this is one that I wish would have went on sale for like 40% off, even 30% off. I probably would have pulled the trigger. I just really, really like this palette. And I am going to start a 10 part series where I start labeling my 28 pan Natasha Denona palettes, which I didn't realize how many people own them. Quite a few people in my community own them as well as others that I have seen kind of in the YouTube neighborhood. So it'll be kind of interesting to see what I come up with to kind of like make these palettes my own. Um, and I want to see if we can't make the star palette out of those two or even like if I have to you know borrow from another really popular palette I'm okay with that and I think you guys would be okay with that too so that is something that I wish I would have purchased before 2022's nothing new <sighs> nothing new let's go on I wish I would have gotten more primers once I started getting more organized and started getting my stuff put out I wish I would have bought another primer um, I use the Tatcha primer, not the liquid one, the actual one in the balmy, you know, little container. And I recently decluttered it and recycled the packaging because I was completely out of it. I switched it over to my kit, but I did, I did scrape out a couple times and use it on myself. I found it to be very finicky depending on the type of foundation I used. It wasn't very universal. Um, it did work well for mature skin or people with skin care concerns you know like dry skin and fine lines and wrinkles but it was not a formula that I could use and depend on for almost every single foundation that I had in my kit and I carried quite a few different formulas so I happened to know that it worked well with my bri I call it my bridal foundation line and that was the healthy foundation from physicians formula I liked it for my bridal clients. I know some people would probably disagree because it does contain um, sunscreen in it, but it never gave me flashback. And I, I did multiple takes with it and I, you know, I did everything I could. So I think they've kind of fixed that in foundations. And I think it more comes out in the powders if you're, if you're not careful and you powder heavily. But I wish I would have gotten the e.l.f. Acne Fighting Putty Primer. I fight acne really bad. And I'm also wishing that I kind of had a couple of days were when I really want that beautiful doll porcelain skin I can just kind of you know just glide this putty primer right over it know that I'm adding some skincare ingredients to my foundation you know to the base and then also kind of give me that really smooth canvas that I'm really truly desiring most of the time I'll tell you what I use for a primer this is why I don't have very many primers most of the time I use my Super Goop Play because it's my sunscreen and it's a moisturizer and many people just use a moisturizer as a primer and it works for them. I do it because I want to make sure I get enough sunscreen and make sure that it's on my skin so I use that for that reason. Um, therefore I haven't really used too many other ones. The Milani primer with SPF 30 in it. 
Again, very finicky with many of the foundations that I have used and it will pill on me if I'm not careful. So I just stick to the super goop. I've never had a problem with any of my foundations pilling on me. So it's not finicky. The next item that I wish I would have purchased before Nothing New 22 is the Natasha Denona Love Glow Cheek Palette. Believe it or not, I thought that is what I got for Christmas. <laughs> Turns out I got the Bloom one, which is fine. I think both of them are very beautiful, but I don't have anything in my collection, kind of that bubblegum pink, like what you see in the lower left-hand corner. And I think that would have added some diversity to my collection. But alas, I got the Bloom palette and I'm happy with that. But I still do kind of think like it would be nice to own all four of them because I think she only has four out. And I have three quarters of them. So it's like super tempting, super tempting. Completionist Kendra is coming out. Another, so let's get into some singles. There's some singles out there that I was hoping to own before my Nothing New 22, but I held back. I have made a couple of shopping carts with this particular product in it. You should have never filmed this kind of stuff with your producer because they're the ones that fund all of this and they make they tend to make faces at you when you're telling them what you wish you could have bought. <laughs> so I really, really, I saw this on Lauren May Beauty's channel. She bought the Touch and Soul Metalist sparkling foil pigments she owns all six of them they're $18 a shadow though and they did go on sale for 20% off at one point and you know how I feel about 20% off that's like that doesn't really get me that doesn't really even like rev my engine I'm like pumping the brakes at 20% going can you give me any more can I throw another coat on it can we double dip here folks 20% off at of $18 isn't really a lot. Then they, what? <laughs> Do you have anything to add? No? Okay, I didn't buy it, so. The thing that made me really glad that I didn't purchase the shadows, however, was I saw someone's Instagram post and, okay, good, he's gone. I bought them, no. <laughs> the thing that made me really glad that I didn't actually ever purchase any of these shadows was that the hollow mulberry is the one that I was attracted to and the hollow mulberry was on somebody's Instagram in their declutter bin because they said it made them look sickly and those are the types of shades that yes I see it because it's got that like pinky rosy undertone and then it's got that beautiful teal shift over the top super beautiful um, very dynamic, very dimensional, but I, I, I can almost bet she has a similar skin tone to mine where it's kind of like neutral leans cool. Probably not going to go over well with me. Probably wouldn't look very good on me. Something that would look really good on me is something that I already own, like ColourPop's Ritz or um, the Jaclyn Hill Icicle um, shadow toppers that I already own. I think those those are gonna be fine. They're gonna be well loved. I also have some of the cushion eyeshadows from Ulta Beauty, the bounce eyeshadows. Those are gonna be fine. Like I don't need these, but did I want them? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I and I still do to some extent. I still do want them. I knew in 2021 that Makeup Geek was supposed to launch a set of brushes. Actually, I knew since 20, 2020 that they were supposed to launch a set of eye brushes and I kind of predicted in 2019 what the 2020 brushes were going to look like because Marlena Stell was um, featuring some of those prototypes on her live streams. Now she didn't end up going with the prototype that she showed all of us on camera which I was really surprised because one of the prototypes that she showed us on camera she actually was using it as an example because of the shape of the brush head and it's one that BK Beauty uses and it's one that it was a very well received brush shape so I was really surprised that Makeup Geek didn't take that and run with it but nonetheless they didn't I got my hands on two of the face brushes but in 2022 January here of 2022 she launched the Makeup Geek eye brush collection if you guys know anything about my channel Makeup Geek is where I blow my wad. Mm -hmm. 
that's it. I own every single highlighter. I own, I think I own the majority of the blushes. I own the majority of the bronzers. I'm pretty sure I own every highlighter. I own every single eyeshadow she comes out with. And I don't want to say this and spoil this for you, but if she launches a duochrome or a multi-chrome this year, I might be willing to break my Novi. That just really... It depends on when it is released, how it is released, and, you know, if the brand would be willing to work with me and I could purchase ahead of time. I am an affiliate with Makeup Geek, but I don't receive their PR, so I have to spend my own money, which is how I actually want it, to be honest with you. That's how I actually want it, is self-sponsored reviews. But with funds the way they are this year, I just don't think I would be able to um, because duochromes would probably be in the 12 to $16 range a piece and they might be excluded from the nine pans. Um, the nine pan make your own palette like you see up here and you can get that for $38. If that is the case, then I probably just won't purchase this year, but I will admire from afar. I really wanted the eye brush collection. I had every intentions to buy. In fact, I think I said in my Makeup Geek Brush review um, that I was going to buy them and I was going to review them. And I've gotten DMs asking me, are you going to review the Makeup Geek eye brush collection? Just as it, like very matter of factly. And I was like, I'm sorry, but nothing new 22. You know, I just, th that's me like, <sighs> delicately putting it out there i just don't really want to devote any money to any more makeup purchases and i'm sure you guys can see why i mean this is like i've got like six of these makeup pouches just sitting around with makeup in it i need to use up setting aside all monetary in interest whatsoever i've got <laughs> so much invested already so i really wanted to buy those brushes i really wanted to review the brushes i have every intentions of in 2023 that might be my first purchase i don't know i don't know after this year long no buy i have learned a couple things and that is a lot of my anxiety has subsided because i'm no longer worried about how much money i'm spending on makeup how I'm going to organize that makeup, what I'm going to do with that makeup in terms of like making sure that my channel is feels included. Like the more money I spend on a my makeup item, I feel like the more vested interest somebody might have and therefore I need to showcase it more and talk about it and you know work with it and all those things. That's starting to subside because I don't own you know, I'm not constantly buying it. I'm, I'm looking at all this makeup I've got in my room and going, okay, now I can start, you know, now I can begin. And the breath is, so let's talk, um, some more singles. I recently binged Alice's Beauty Madness. She put out a few like single eyeshadow declutters because I think after my no buy year, I'll be ready to start letting go of some products. I saw that she kept a lot of her Nabla shadows and I was really shocked because those were some of her older shadows in her collection and yet they were they were staying. They were staying the test of time and they were and it was always the same thing. I really like this formula. I really like this extra punch this shadow, you know, puts into it. The the color wasn't anything unique but the formula was. And you know how I feel about when I hear formula, sometimes it's like, oh, my ears perk up. Because when you can get a really unique formulation, sometimes that can dupe some of your high-end brands. And then you can just purchase that one shadow and you're good, you know? So I get inspired by stuff like that. I do. I want to also talk about Davina. I didn't make any Black Friday purchases from Davina. I really did want the Carnival Suites collection. I didn't love on my Davina shadows enough last year to warrant the price tag that it is. And her shadows are very affordable. So that's saying a lot. I just didn't use them enough. I It's hard. It's hard because she puts out very shifty, very shiny, very metallic, sparkly you know, duochrome, multi-chrome, very wet formulations, very pigmented, like you swatch it and it's just so divine. 
right? There's not a lot of mainstream bands that put out that kind of product. So when I use Davina shadows, it overpowers, it takes the rest of the, you know, Bill Jerome palette or the rest of the dupe palette breath away. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it can easily be something that just steals people's thunder. <laughs> These shadows are incredible and they're at an incredible price. I really wanted the Carnival Sweets collection. However, I have the Sweet Shop collection, I think is what it's called, where it's got the Runs, Pixie Sticks, um, Everlasting Gobstoppers, the blue one, I think, or blue, yellow, shifty one. They just don't get featured on my channel enough because they just don't get enough love in general from the community because they are so incredibly unique. They really don't act as a comp shade they really don't act like a formula dupe for anything else they're very very unique so they just don't, they don't get enough love i gotta i gotta figure out something some way to incorporate that and that's why i took a step back and i said kendra just figure it out you'll find a way to start using those shadows and you'll find a way to start you know you'll you'll get there but you can't get there if you're buying all this stuff Davina is one of them that I just tend to blow my wad on also and then it's very overwhelming to manage I I know some of my single shadow lovers are this way as well it is super overwhelming if you order over 16 shadows at one time because you've got all that I don't want to say all that packaging but you've got those slots then you've got the little pouch in the center and it's just and then taking them out carefully and then placing them in your magnetic pan and then is this the one where I want to house them it's actually very very cumbersome at times once you get them all seated and the way you like it I would say you're good to go like 90% of your heartache <laughs> potential heartache you know there's always potential for casualty when you unbox and that's like some of the most anxiety that's why i don't unbox a lot on my channel um because a it's like look at what i bought and you might not be able to afford and then secondly it's actually very very stressful <laughs> it's very stressful for me anyways once it's all like out and it's in its you know house then i'm like oh look love uh, yes but until then it's pretty it's pretty uh, uh so i wanted to own the carnival suites collection the other one that i wanted to own actually the moonscape collection this now this set does look like it might be more like pastel -y shades of astrals oh just looking at it right now makes me just want to like mm, add to cart boom add to cart but it is sold out, thankfully. Ooh, that pink flare, that air glow and moonbeam look like some of the astral shades in Pat McGrath. I would be so excited to see if the shadows are comparable in formula. I would love to have gotten my hands on them. And maybe, maybe in 2023, that can be a purchase, you know, a gift to myself. Oh, then there's also another shadow, Moonlit. Oh, yes, honey, give it to me. That does also look like a, uh, a Pat McGrath shade, and I forget which one. Was it the number three subliminal palette that has, like, no, those are blue ones. Those are blue ones. I thought it had, like, a silvery, icy, like, silver astral shade. Somebody let me know. It is $8.00. And that's really not that bad considering considering this if that were Pat McGrath's like comparable or dupe formulation you get the next Pat McGrath mothership palette and you see those four astral shades and you know that you already own them like isn't that kind of neat you know like isn't that very beautiful I think so I was like blown away I just wanted to buy everything and I knew I knew I knew I could not I couldn't put that stress and anxiety on myself not for 2021 um and and definitely not for 2022 just for the purposes of examination but i really am super intrigued to see what some of these swatch out like if there's any videos i haven't found anyone pushing out content with the moonscape collection the other one that i was really intrigued with and i i bet you anything this is the year pat mcgrath pushes out singles of astral shades. I just, I 
feel it with every bit of my being because we're still, in my opinion, I think we're gonna look back and we're gonna see we were in an economic recession this entire time. People just can't spend that huge chunk of money. They just can't. We gotta start right sizing. You gotta start right sizing. And that means the shade's still gonna be what the shade costs, maybe even a little bit more, you know, profit margin, but you're only gonna have one astral shade being sold. And put it in like one of those little compacts like Bobby Brown. Just like and but it's black and it's sleek and it's cute. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why Pat McGrath hasn't done it yet. Like, is there a reason, Pat? Mother Pat, is there a reason? Like you don't want to do that to us? Um, let me know, Pat, because we want it. The LeVay collection, no, no, I can do without because I've got my multi-chromes and I'm, I'm very satisfied with my multi-chromes. I, I'm not, not interested in, in any of those other ones. So I'm okay. Also, something that I want to mention, Davina is, it's only, you know, it's an indie owned brand. It, they tend to work their little tuchuses off and rebuild everything or you know restock everything and then they sell out very quickly so i think davina is just one of those brands everybody knows that they're good and everybody just buys it you know like you don't have to go and watch a youtube video to know this stuff is good you just go and get in line and hope you can get what you're asking for <laughs> so it's kind of like do i do I really need to make a video, a dedicated video on this product? No, I can just use these shadows in my collection. And that is that is something that I do like about Davina is that when I bust out my Davina shades, people just love to see them and I love to show them off. So, I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely on my wish list, but nothing new 22. So I think that is it. The Nabla and the Davina singles. The, if I could add any other brand, it'd probably be Nabla that would be new to my collection because I, A, I already have a palette that has, they're 30 millimeter pans and I was really, really not stoked about introducing a 30 millimeter pan to my collection. Um, if you haven't already, go check out brands, pan sizes to common, you know, palettes and, you know, just, just shadows and go and see exactly what size some of these things are and and you can see there's a like quite a vast variety of shapes and sizes that these eyeshadows come in so to add like yet one more i was like i don't want another 30 millimeter pan i do have 30 millimeter pans i do have three um palettes that house 30 millimeter pans so i do have a house for my nab my Nabla, my Nabla shadows that I don't own yet. <laughs> I do have a way to house them, but they actually contain some shadows already and I do need to declutter them. I just, you know, I'm taking one day at a time, doing one thing at a time. So when that happens, then the rest of the, my, you know, little system can fall into place. And until then, um, and, and it'll probably be 2023 before, you know, I get that cleaned out and ready to go anyways. You know because there's so much other stuff in store for my channel this year with that said thank you so much for watching can't wait to see you guys in my next video if you haven't already homework before you leave subscribe all right thanks so much whoa, 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 wait but there's more there's more there's more i want to do an update i want to do an update because i know i said nothing new 22 and it can't you know like budget wise we just can't financially support um, adding more makeup, but I do want to update you. I have from last year's Christmas in July sale purchased. Ah, uh, hello. You just kind of like you and no one else. So last year, <laughs> you know how much I spent. <laughs> we dallied it up together. I purchased from the Christmas in July sale from Sydney Grace, and I took the spend so much money and you get us in-store credit and it gave you like a 45 percent off savings basically but they just give you a credit so i do have an in-store credit so if something i do plan to purchase wondrous night and a couple of the other shades from sydney grace's collection that they have told me that they're making permanent from their mystery bags I am planning to purchase those, but I really needed to know whether or not those were actually going to be just leftover mystery bags that they parted out. And so I did verify with them. They are making that part of their permanent line. The 2020 mystery bags, they have like some really nice shiny shimmery champagne colors. So I do plan on picking 
Okay, now this stuff is moving. You moved the ring light. So I am planning to purchase those, but those would have been purchased in 2021 had they restocked for the Black Friday sale. This is just, they just happen to do the restock in January. So that's the only reason why this purchase is being made. And I don't really consider it a purchase in 22 because it's just the timing of the businesses you know restocks on that note I think I just wanted to clarify that so if uh, you see a couple more of those shadows enter my collection it's because of that reason I guess I do have a two dollar credit with shop missing oh yeah this is also another update that I wanted to make I really didn't clearly define any parameters but just no more makeup right I am starting to see how much makeup I really truly have because now that I've gotten rid of what I don't want from my kit and I have kept what I do want from my kit I have some organizing to do and so I need some more organizers. So I will be making a Shop Missé purchase um, with, I'm gonna buy some of their $1.88 organizers. But other than that, I don't really consider that a purchase. It's not makeup related. It, it could be, you know, I could put my silverware in it, I could put straws in it, I could put whatever, it's an organizer. And I would have purchased it beforehand, but I spent November editing and then December you know making the decision to do the 2022 nothing new 22 so with that said um there's no nothing new to report i have not broken my 2022 um no buy so nothing has been purchased no makeup no nothing i do want to talk briefly about i also was very concerned about the amount of time i was spending just looking up products researching them everything from ingredients to information to prices shopping for you know like coupon codes and things like that you know that might be helpful for my community i've only done i think about three to four actual shopping carts i found myself um indulging a little bit and just like loading up a shopping cart going yeah i would like to i'd like to purchase and then i stopped myself and said okay kendra what is triggering you to want to purchase? And I started really thinking about my feelings associated behind it. And there was always an underlying reason why I was, you know, wanting to purchase something. And it was usually an emotion that I was not comfortable feeling at that point in time. So I, I would stop and I would, you know, step back and then I would just go ahead and I'd put my phone down and I'd go do something else. And the feeling went away. <laughs> because that's the life cycle of a feeling is it eventually goes away even good feelings they eventually go away but that's what makes it so wonderful is you've got you know the bad feelings but they'll never stay forever and then you've got good feelings too and those are always fun as well i think that's it so nothing to report on my no breaking of my no buy i really thought i was going to break my no buy for those makeup geek brushes but i didn't i did not i did enter the giveaway i entered the giveaway so if i won i mean then i will review them for my channel but no I have no plans or intentions of buying them oh and I did win some brushes from OVW which is a Chinese artisan brand I don't know if they're artisan I think they're machine made so those will be reviewed but I won that in 2021 I think it was in December of some time so I will review those for my channel as well and then I think that's it I think that's it yeah nothing yet and it's been over a month and I haven't I haven't purchased but I have found myself wanting I mean, the want is still there, but I'm really, really, I'm feeling satisfied with having a wish list and it's starting to become more and more clear what that is because I think about the products that I truly do want on my wish list instead of just constantly buying sporadically. And then it was like, well, why did you even buy that? That wasn't even on your radar. What, what happened there, Kendra? You know, like, let's talk about this. But that's not happening anymore because I'm not purchasing, you know, and then trying to figure out later why I did it it's becoming very clear like oh yeah i really want this but you know what i really wanted this palette i really want this star palette i really want this star palette and that's becoming very clear to me now so with that said that is it for this episode of nothing new 22 i hope you guys will stay with me in the year 2022 as we navigate these waters and continue to use the products that we've got and make good use of them, rotate through them. There'll begin to be some shop with me stashes as soon as I get some stuff organized. Cause right now, I guess I could do a shop with me, um, you know, shop my stash. And then just as things change, just show you guys them. Yeah, that's let's do it. So I will put together a shop my stash video. So nothing new 22. Thanks so much for joining me. Can't wait to see you guys in my next video. Bye.